Hey, hi, hello, uh, hi, hello to the people. This I've never done a good introduction to this show, not a once. Uh, my name, my name is Jeff May. What does it look like to you? A good introduction? It's to I, the people. Well, I think it would sound uh, something professional and confident instead of me just showing up and being like, "Oh God, am I doing a show?" I think that like ninety percent of conversational podcasts start with like. Oh, did we start? Like the guest going, because yeah. they'll just be Should talking. I hit record? They yeah. just, they're already talking. Like it's all that thing. It's like the beginning of a Kickstarter video. Mm-hmm. We're all like, ha, ha, oh, hi. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, we did see you here. Yeah. Hi, my, hi. Uh, hi. It's me. It's me, Jeff May. And this is Jeff has cool friends. And I have a very cool friend. I'm very excited to have him on. A person that I've been uh, trying to get onto the show for quite some time. All it took was asking. And then I was like, oh, I should probably check availability. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm very excited to have a writer, creator, producer, Ben Acker. Ben, how you doing? I'm great. Hey, you sit down at home. Thanks. Uh, it's nice to be here. It's, it's nice to be. It's so a nice. Friend. It's so nice to have you here. Um, we, I've, uh, I met you on the internet first. I met you on the Twitter. Yes. And we were just like, ah, oh, we're similar people. Yeah. Uh, which is fair. I was the, the me one, and you were the you guy. That's it. Well, no, I was the me one, and you were the you guy. Fair. So it's yeah. We're just two, <laughs> what's more ridiculous than perspective, everyone? It's just two, right, two, right in two spiders, man. Two spiders po- po- uh, pointing at each other. Um, and then uh, so it was just we were just acquaintances on on Twitter, followed each other, blah blah blah. And then like like several months later, I'm at a party. Mm-hmm. At, I'm at the, probably the same. Oh, I'm getting ahead of the story. You sure never, are. You never. sure are. You're at a party. This is your experience. Your podcast. You yes, know. I'm. 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 I'm giving my narrative, and then you're going to jump in with your part oh, of that. This, this is going to be Rashomon. on this. This, this is really fun because I know you that you write with a partner oftentimes mm-hmm. too, and and this so this like. must be what this it's is, like. There's some curtain. Um, I'm at a party. Uh, I believe it was a holiday party at Jennifer Muro's place. Uh, Jen is uh, one of the best people in the game. She's been on the show in this iteration. She's been on the show in the previous iteration. One of my favorite people in the world. And I'm sitting there and me and you are in the living room talking. And then it clicks on me. I'm like, oh, we know each other. Mm-hmm. Like we, we, we've we been interacting for months on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Um, so another friendship facilitated in person by Jen Muro. That's right. Who also was facilitating the last time that I saw you, which was, I believe, Thanksgiving mm-hmm. of, was it Thanksgiving of 2021 it was or something. 2020? It was like a brief respite in between it, COVID. It was, yeah, one of those things where we were all taking it very seriously and uh, and eating food outside. Right. But like also, none of us had talked to people in right a while, that weren't in our immediate bubbles. Y- yes. Remember mm-hmm. Bubbles. Do you remember when we when we were like COVID is a thing, mm-hmm. and then we were just like, no, it's not, and then still like thousands and thousands of people were getting it. You ever get it? I literally had it like two weeks ago. That's right. Wipe your hands, everybody, dude. It, Wash your groceries. My my mom was in such denial that my nephew had COVID. She was like, it's allergies, and I was like, it is raining outside. You tell me what allergy is coming up. He's allergic to the rain. Yeah, I was like, what pollen is floating around right now? <laughs> In the in the forty eight degree rain that's <laughs> happening right here, you absolute ass. You talk to your mom like that? No. Well, I mean, up, to, up until the absolute her. ass part, uh, right. I absolutely would. Because I'd be like, "What is wrong with you? Like, why are you saying that? That's clearly <laughs> a lie." Um, so of course I got it. Let me tell you, the, picnic? Huh? Is it a picnic? It's a. It was a blast. It <laughs> sucked for like two two days. It was awful. It was like the first day, like the day after I tested positive, mm. and I don't know if that's a psychosomatic issue, mm-hmm. but the day after I um, I went positive, it, it like all fell apart. Where uh, I was just, it, it felt like I, somebody was bashing my brains in at all times. Real, real good stuff. Real fun stuff. Real big fish. Do you know yet if you have the long COVID? I mean, I'm pretty good. My lungs still feel like I just got out of a swimming pool. You know, that like that heightened, almost like ticklishly shallow breath. All right. And I cough a little bit still. But, you know, I've been out of the contagion field for quite a while. And I still like mask up when I go in public. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, having me cough near them yeah. after have, ju- after seeing me on, on social media that I clearly had it. I'm very like full disclosure. I, I went to my pinball league last night and told everybody in my group, like, mm-hmm. just so you know, I was, I'm not, I'm going to keep my mask on until I play my game where I'm alone and nobody's next to me. Just as that heads up. 
No, 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 no. That was that. But uh, anyway, we we hung out, we talked, we we goofed up and off, and checked okay. out what we were talking about. And you were gonna start embarking on a a physically uh, enduring challenge of of getting ripped. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And that's an audience you can't see. You don't know. I'm ripped. And you're shredded. I'm shredded. Shredded. It's uh, a cheese grater in here. Yeah, it's so so much. It's called Nabisco, baby, because you're mm-hmm. shredded wheat. There it is. Uh, I hey Nabisco. <laughs> hey, Quick Nab- question. Hey. Will you direct my call to whoever wants to hear about that? I am shredded wheat. Yeah, who who would like to hear that? The, this show brought to you by Nabisco. Nabisco. Mm-hmm. We stole Oreos from Hydrox. Nabisco. Uh, <laughs> you know they have to call it like uh, creme. Creme. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because it's made of like hydrogenated oils. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not formerly lard. It's not. Which finally, it's about time we had a sweet. A, imagine if you had a lard Oreo mm. now. It would be great, right? How fucking incredible that delicious. would be! It would be so oh, the, good just to have it with the Coca Cola with the cocaine in it. Have you ever had? Um, have you ever had tortilla chips cooked in lard? Probably. They're unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I think it was. It's like pavilions sells them they make their own nice and they cook them in lard and you eat them and you're like this is the best goddamn tortilla chip i've ever had it's like a duck fat fry there's a restaurant in portland maine called duck fat and that's like their whole thing is that they cook everything in duck fat and it's incredible yeah we live uh i live uh right uh near burbank airport you hold for airplanes i don't know if these mics actually pick it up because these mics are really good and they they only really pick up this um but, but they're picking up what's putting what's been put in our ears, right? Um, I'm not sure if it'll process. But if you guys did hear that, hey, there a plane just went over. It happens. Hold for sound. Yeah, this, we're not cavemen transported in time and cavemen ogling the uh, the is idea that, of those metal birds. Hi, how you doing? I'm Morty Caveman. That's right. Uh, the, what is metal bird in sky? I'm um, <laughs> hello. <laughs> me have club. Me have uh, wheel. Me, me me kill giant giant bird. Me eat very long time. <laughs> If flesh, not metal. <laughs> you are a, a very, very busy writer. You do so much stuff. No, formerly. You are a formerly busy writer. Yeah. And now just very, you're very lazy. <laughs> it's now. not lazy. I went through the same pandemic we all did. Really? No, I think everybody had their own individual. We all had pandemics. our own pandemics. Yeah. But it, yeah, no, like, uh, it's weird. I'm in a weird, like, I was I was very busy for a very long time. When mm-hmm. I, I did a... a a thing one time. I did a thing one time for 10 years called the Thrilling Adventure Hour, which Ooh, was a monthly That's in my notes. Stage show in the style of Oldie Temmy Radio and podcast. And uh, when we stopped doing that, people got mad at you for that. That's fine. Why then, did you stop? Why did you stop? It had been 10 years. Okay. We wanted to do it in other forms. We wanted to evolve the thing. We had, mm-hmm. we had intricate plans to make more of the thing in different forms. You wanted to make it a show on the telly or whatever. Yes, but yes, Te- television. Yes, movies. Yes, but like immediately there were plans to like, I don't know, figure out how to use at the time like YouTube was paying people to make things of value. Yeah, right. And it was like we we had relationships with people who had deals that was like, why don't we build a space saloon and continue Sparks as a live endeavor that lives here on the internet where people are used to getting it. Yeah, that, and it was a weird time that for didn't happen. people who make those things. Yeah, like. Uh, one the, the one with whom we had the closest relationship had uh, like left the company to do other things, but like was still in charge. And then we went to another who was like, uh, "They don't want it. Let's, of course, we'll do it." Uh, but we we just have a meeting this week with like NBC Universal. Oh, we we can go direct to television. And we're like, well, television doesn't want television's not ready yet for a space western, right? We want to do this in the weird. <laughs> what place are you talking the about? They had a space western in two thousand, and how, now you remember how yeah, that went? It went great, right? Yeah. Everybody's still watching. Everybody all, loves all Firefly. 15, Twenty seasons of it. Yeah, right. Um, Just the supernatural of Joss Whedon shows. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, it, it didn't materialize. But we were, you know, we were pursuing comics and uh, of the of the, the show, the most financially rewarding process and of easiest, something. easiest. Yeah. And when people love your cast, what they want is the comic book. They want a drawing of that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we were busy. The point is, for for ten years running, it was nice to like. Have a breath and take a lunch and, I could, I could, and go. Wait, I'm f- I'm forty. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Like that's a thing. Yeah, you get like when your work life balance has been way more one than the other, and you get a chance to like reevaluate when you get to when stuff. you get to life over work. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh so it's been like a a concerted effort to not spend all my time writing a thing because it it did go essentially it was canceled right around 
the pandemic. What was like because there was like the uh, like, um, the thrilling adventure hour because I went on to it and looked at it and there was stuff that was published. You mean comics and stuff? No, no um, the, the, the podcast. Podcasts. Yeah, and it wasn't canceled so much as we but like I mean, we endeavored to do like studio stuff. Mm-hmm. Like we, we always wanted to wanted to evolve it in in ways. Like mm-hmm. when you spend that long doing a thing, you know you know the core of it, and you can always yeah. do that. But like seeing what else you can do with it, so. you're gonna get bored if you don't. It's not even about bored because we love the characters, and we love the stories, and we love the people that we work with. Like it's. But I mean, you're. Not, but if you're not necessarily challenging yourself, sure. There's a creative boredom in spite of how much you love right doing the thing. Like and could always do it. Yeah. But it, and it's it's that. But it's also like, if we could always do it, like that's a trap, right? Yeah. But yeah, no. In the studio, we got to we got to play with it. We got to like be head writers of it, as opposed to the ones writing every episode, which we had dabbled with in holiday episodes in the live show. And you say towards the end, we, we you mean my writing you, partner Ben and your writing partner, and this is insane to me that you're. I am used to it. Yeah, I, I get it. That. Like, I, I get it. But I like, get how um, it's a it how it requires a, a double take. That's right. Because you are Ben Acker. That's right. And your your writing partner is Ben Blacker. I'm glad you said it. And boy. What an interesting name combination to ha- it's right. almost seems like one of you is trying to one up the other one with names. That's right. It's him, right? It like, seems like he's the one that's it, trying to one up, it, or it's yeah, or it seems like he's just like, Well, I'm Ben Blacker, so you can't be. Mm-hmm. It's almost like both of you came in with the same name and mm-hmm. one of you had to they change flip it. A coin. Yeah. The, the, the two funny things that have ever been said about our names one, when someone who knew me met Ben Blacker, said to him, I thought you'd be darker. Fair. And the other, when we went for coffee with Jane Espenson for the first time, she tweeted, I'm off to coffee with Ben Acker and Ben Blacker, which sounds like an Ogden Nash poem, but isn't. I mean, it's, it, I did have to like triple check yeah, you when, check. I, when I first was like doing all that. I mean, obviously I'd heard the names before, but I didn't realize how. You were two guys? I mean, it's yeah. all, it's harder to understand that. In the beginnings of our career, career we would get from executives, well, like, you're bound to get a job with those names. And we were always like, I, I dare you to be the one. Yeah. You go ahead and prove I, that I am, yeah, it, I am bound, so mm-hmm. let's let's fulfill the let's, fates yeah. here. If, <laughs> like in the prophecy. Give me a job in the fulfillment of the scripture, That's please. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so you, you so, yeah, and So, yeah, so we, we did the studio thing for a while, and then there were, we I think we had other projects that took precedence over the studio stuff. So we, we let the studio iteration of Thrilling Adventure be what it was. And then in the pandemic, we brought back the Thrilling Adventure Hour in Zoom form. Mm-hmm. Blacker and his wife and brother-in-law invented a platform. They were like first to market with one of these switchable, like use a switcher like you're in a TV studio to mm-hmm. like take the Zoom and make, put people on, whatever, okay, yeah. to be able to do a live show and have it be a, an, an all-in-one venue where you could like buy a ticket and see the show on the same website. And it was less about that and more about wanting to be active in the world that was falling apart around us. Yeah, correct. You know, and like, so to, to have our stupid Cowboys versus Robots program make any kind of difference. And it really, it really did. It was just it was like, so funny if you're like, and it did, it did no, not. It absolutely. It was, like we, we, the, the, the fans came out to like donate money to the charity that we would do. Like each, each one was for a different, like food banks and like. Black Lives Matter, like all the, yeah. th- the the things that you, uh, the causes that were like punching you in the face with. I need to be a yeah. active citizen in the f- the world right now, but I can't go outside. Which is one level of, but the other level of it was like, just putting all these friends together on screen was hanging out with this this group of people that palpably love each other. Mm-hmm. So we did shows, we did traditional shows, we did weird shows where like the cast just gets together. And uh, has a drink out. and does tri- show trivia with audience members and like well that's fun like a New Year's hang and like yeah it was really it was a lot of different iterations <laughs> and fun and weird and I like that yeah that's fun so now you said the fans not not happy that you guys uh, are are on, on a hiatus I told you that in confidence uh, no you didn't oh didn't you say that on here. No, that was over there. Oh, whoops. I mean, but I mean, it's, it's, no, that's not something no, that needs I, to be confidential. What I, what, I, what I did say was that we, when we ended. You don't have the, to say what you did we, say. I, no, what I will say yeah. is that when we ended the show, like once and for all, like we are going, we called like at one Comic Con, we were like, we're going to keep doing the show through to the anniversary of the show and we're going to end the monthly show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that was in pursuit of, as I said, like trying to grow the thing, but we didn't want to like 
get people's hopes up by saying, and we're going to try and grow the thing into the other thing or anything. And there was no, we didn't have, like, we didn't, I think we didn't do it the best that anybody's ever done the, the disappointing their fans by saying there's an end in sight. How do you thing. disappoint your fans the best? Uh, where they aren't disappointed, where they're looking forward to uh, okay. what's next. I, based on based on trial Fair. and error, I think that you get them excited about what's next, and then you do what's next, and you don't give them a gap in programming. Yeah, but that's so. That is such a okay. Here's the thing: is from a creative standpoint, it is very frustrating to know that fans don't always understand the machinations of. The thing we do mm -hmm. and the time, the effort, the production costs, the, the, the time costs, which I, I essentially have just said twice where you're, or, or the, the idea of like having to do a rewrite on something or mm -hmm. to be like, no, this isn't the quality that I want it to be. Mm -hmm. I need to go back and I need to reevaluate this whole process and build it from the ground up again. Mm -hmm. And you can't, it's hard to address that stuff like you're a customer service rep mm -hmm. when you just want to be like, can you just f trust me? Mm -hmm. It's weird. Cause I, yeah. I've never said this stuff out loud into a microphone before. Like it's neat. It is neat. It is neat. It's almost freeing in a way to yeah, like, really like be the able thing to... is that like it's, there's not a moment where I don't appreciate a million percent. Oh, of course the fans, right? Like we did we literally thing. no career without them, but yeah. it's not even that like it's, it's um, that thing of like, I would watch the show from, the booth above the audience because mm -hmm. I would do the sound effects from there and that's where you had to do it. And so I had just like the best view in the house of the show and then the audience reacting to the show and like I, and I, and I knew the show well enough having just written it that like when they would react to something and I'd be like, just you wait four more beats. Yeah. Right. Like you got something even better. Coming. Oh my God. When, Oh, Croach is going to die and you're going to die because Croach is going to die. <laughs> it's that collaboration with it's collaboration is not the right word, but it's as close as you get yeah. in human English to the feeling of like the give and take with this, with the audience. Like it's, Oh, it's all about that. And then knowing like, and we're going to send it out all over the world and people in four weeks are going to get this right, in yeah. their homes and like Twitter lights up the, oh, oh, and they have the, and the fans making a community for themselves. Oh yeah. I love that. Yeah. God, it was like seeing how welcoming they were to each other, like barely understanding t uh, what a Tumblr is. Oh, right. Um, and seeing like coming to it late and going, oh, they've, they've been here the whole time and they're so like caring and well, and like it was a whole th Yeah, no, like there's not a piece of me that doesn't appreciate absolutely the fans yeah. and want to f knock them on their asses. Yeah. Right? And so like, but we had no like... Just nobody that came before us to like point to and go, oh, that's how that's how you make sure that they're served in this time where we're not going to be giving the usual. So you got to serve content. as that lesson. Yeah. 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 No, I found out this is I don't know. I found I did an interview once with a, a British person doing a British radio show about podcasting. Like they were doing uh, like a about, radio show about podcasting. That seems <laughs> antithetical. Well, I think it was a one-off, like a special or something. Yeah. And I found out that we were the first narrative fiction podcast. Oh, sh There was one that like popped up maybe a month or two before, but only lasted an episode or two in England that nobody talks about or remembers. But it was like, we, I mean. You, we, you brought, you brought essentially radio plays to podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's weird. And, it sure and, is. And, yeah. she, and she was like, well, what do you think of the other, the other ones? And I was like, you mean Night Vale? And they're like, no, there's a lot of them. Like, there sure are. All right. And like, it's weird. Like this is such an oversaturated market. And, and I've, I've had this discussion with people a lot and cause you know, I've been doing unpopular opinion, which was like the first podcast I did since 2013. Mm -hmm. And I've been at it, you know, regularly ever since. And you know, like I'm one of the few people that that that's my career is that I make money doing podcasting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the emotional version of OnlyFans, where yeah. I'm I'm you know I'm I'm bearing I'm bearing everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm emotionally nude when I'm doing these things, and people seem to like it. But like, I'm small. <laughs> like, I'm not you a can't huge. Do the things the big kids. I'm do. not a huge show. Like, I'm not like a Night Vale or or any of these ones where people are making you know. $800,000 a year doing their podcast. I make, I still make less than I did as a teacher, 
but I'm so lucky and I, mm-hmm. I still love it and I still recognize and acknowledge how small of a fish I am in this world and how, how hard I have to work mm. to stand out mm-hmm. in this world. There is an aspect of like, we worked really hard. Yeah. And, and like, and the, you know, you know, is that, does that make sense? The success feature of that is uh-huh. to make it look like you didn't work very hard. And which oh, is, so I shouldn't mention, but no, but it, no, no, no. I mean, like when the product comes out, mm-hmm. the seamlessness of it mm-hmm. makes it look like it's natural and easy. And, and I mean, that's anything stand up mm-hmm. comedy, same thing. Sure. The best stand up comedy makes you look like a guy just walked up, grabbed the microphone, starts talking, had some ideas and didn't said them out loud and then didn't spend three years trying to build up the specific nuances and mm-hmm. inflections and word choices and and all that stuff in there. Oh, Pepsi is a funnier word than Coke. So, oh, is yeah. it? Hold yeah. on, is it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, because the C. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Coke is a is a more striking sound, but Pepsi okay. is a is a more humorous it's name. Silly. It's silly. It's two syllables. Uh-huh. It ends in a vowel. It's just it's a whole. Uh-huh. But like the the hackneyed bit about words that are funny, hard K is that K sound is the like. They're satisfying. They're the, the that's their uh, platonic ideal of the funny word. There's a there's a great bit that Mulaney does mm-hmm. where he talks about he's like talks about turning off his TV to like fool his parents, and he said he talks about how you know, and he's like, and the screen is still sizzling like a glass of Pepsi, mm-hmm. and it's just like when you look at it and you look at the art of that mm-hmm. line and how it's just the kind of throwaway thing, but you know that Pepsi is clearly the funnier Mm -hmm. word to drop in there. And so like the science of telling that one little line is so clearly visible if you've done the process. Do you think Pepsi Cola would have been funnier? No, just Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Just that two syllable line landed so well and it lands on that, that a long vowel. It's, it's just great. But Pepsi Cola would be an iambic pentameter. It would be, but that's not funny. Ambic pentameter ain't funny. That's for nerds. <laughs> I'm doing a poem. I'm doing stand up. God damn it! But that, but that aspect of like, I wonder how much work it took to write that perfect line, mm-hmm. and to know specifically, and to and the experience that comes through that. It's not just that he when he was writing the bit he knew that, but he had years and years of of prior experience writing those jokes to know exactly what will land perfectly, mm-hmm. and and that to the layman is very seamless looking and very simple looking. And then in the long run, and you talk to a creator and they, you explain and understand how much work mm-hmm. went into it. It's like wild. Mm-hmm. And that, and your show, I mean, your show, it, it clearly because it's scripted, people will know that. But at the same time, when done right, looks easy because that's the whole point. Mm-hmm. You don't want to watch a movie being like, man, I'm thinking about how they made this. <laughs> like that That's not fun. This is Wes Anderson. I mean, in a way, but it also brings you apart from the pretense, you know, because you're like, oh, this is fun. I wonder how they did this. Oh, I missed the joke. That's not funny. Was that a burn on Wes Anderson? I mean, I, I like I like a lot of Wes Anderson movies. I, I liked The French Dispatch. I Love Dogs was great. But, you know, it's still Wes Anderson. I love it. Yeah. Good, but um. So <laughs> is he a fan? Do you know if he listens to the show? He's a huge fan. He's sure. a patron. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, he's just get he's, at me, Wes. He's not at the producer line, so oh. so it's not. Gonna, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, it's fucked. Uh, you know, he's. I I enjoy I enjoy Wes Anderson. Well, the first one was Rushmore, right? That was the first. No, the first one was Bottle Rocket. Bottle Rocket was the first. But Rushmore one. was the like the ele- breakthrough evolutionary jump. That, that was like an MTV movie, essentially. That was like one of those ones that MTV really got behind. And yes, pushed. they used. Um, they had Wes Anderson do a bunch of stuff for the MTV Awards that year, like Max Fisher directing all the nominated movies. Yeah, because I remember that they went really. They went really hard. On they it. went really hard on on that, and correctly. I, sure. You know, it's like getting behind the the right directors. Like they had a big relationship with Spike Jones, and not the worst person to to have a good relationship with. Did you ever see that Spike Jones jeans commercial with Tainted Love? Yes. Like a dude's being rushed into, like he got hit by a car, or whatever. Yes. He's being rushed into the ER. Yes, yes. That was Spike Jones. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and the the heart monitor. And the things putting the breath in his beep, lungs beep. turned yeah. into the, a, a big musical number 
It was really fun. Yeah, that I, I yeah, wow. I totally forgot that that I didn't know. I didn't forget it was a spike. Richard. Jones. His name is Richard. What's your name? Richard. You're gonna be okay, Richard. God. Ooh, yeah. ooh. I wonder what year that was. I'm gonna have Nine, to look. I mean, definitely. Because mid nineties. Well, right? that means I'm gonna have to. I might have to throw that into advertising, which is exactly one of those projects I was talking about, where you <laughs> have to build something up and then scrap it and start back from the beginning, mm-hmm. which is what I, I had done. Uh, I sure do get a lot of emails asking for this show, but <laughs> I'm doing a. I'm developing a podcast about nineties ads, oh, right on. Uh, nineties commercials, and somehow that one hasn't shown up in any of my research yet. Oh, wow. So. I'm gonna to have to revisit it. It's really good. Now I'm now I need now I need to. It might have been it might be later than mid nineties now that I think about it. I mean, when he, did Spike Jones start? Well, I mean, I'm thinking well, about he was like, doing the Beastie Boys stuff, right? He yeah, that but he did like the, the later Beastie Boys stuff, he was right? Doing sabotage. Well, that would be ninety four? Maybe. Is that ninety four? Yeah. I guess yeah, it would be there. Because I know we did like the praise you video. Um, and that was late. That was 99, 99. I want to say. 898, 99. Who knows? This is a weird turn that we took on this conversation. Come but on. it's on, honestly. I've heard enough of your podcast. This is. To uh, know. It, tangentially. Regular. This is a regular turn. Tangentially obligated. <laughs> you know, we, we there are obligations to go on tangents. and there's Oh, yeah, your Tange fans that. are going to be like. <laughs> They did it. They did it again. He, he, I mean, you know, it's like we get that with uh, when we do Tom and Jeff watch Batman. The best episodes are the ones where we rarely talk about the episode and just run a bit <laughs> so hard. And then the next thing you know, you're just getting fan art all about the bit or like you get tweets about over and over and over again. And you're like, yep, this is <laughs> I'll tell you what, doing a podcast about specific things like Batman or like doing the sports podcast that I do, like we did Tony Stewart. Whenever any news happens, I get tweeted at probably 40 or 50 times a day. Mm. I'm like, did you see this? See this? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I did. Like one's like Tony Stewart's house is up for sale right now. And I've been tagged in that tweet like six times. And you don't even like sports isn't even like an incredibly popular podcast. Mm-hmm. It's like a very cult show. But I'm still getting tagged in this what obscure. It doesn't even say it's his. You have to read the <laughs> article. And people are like, did you see Tony Stewart's house is for sale? <laughs> Maybe I'll get it. He killed a guy. Oh, that was the that was the thesis statement of that whole season was Tony Stewart killed a guy. This is how much I don't know about sports. I was like Tony Stewart. That's like Giles was played by Anthony Stewart Head <laughs> and mm, Tony Curtis. <laughs> See that and that's, Jimmy Stewart. That they had a baby. No, uh, that that's who that show's for. Is you. Because it's the show is called You Don't Even Like Sports because right. it's for people that hate sports. I don't hate it. It's just like I'm people glad, that aren't interested. Go ahead and, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. That's it. Like it's not that you hate it, but you don't really like it. <laughs> right. And that, I, so don't, that, I, I don't associate the name of a sportsman exactly. with the sport. But it's, like, and, and we, our favorite episodes are, and our favorite stuff, like we're doing one on John Daly now, the golfer. Oh, sure. Like, I know about him because I know the comedian John Daly. Yeah, of course. Right. So he might as well be. It's like the same guy. Uh, could you... <laughs> But like, so he like the, he made those videos where he was, he's they were very funny. He's way more fascinating. Like, and it's so fascinating not knowing that much about him, just knowing he's a dirt bag. And the mm-hmm. more you realize, like, this guy's a real dirt bag. The, the sportsman. Both. Oh, <laughs> he's also autographed photos of himself playing golf with a cigarette in his mouth. I mean, there's a beautiful South. Do you know the beautiful South? I'm, I don't. There's a band, a, a Britpop band that used to be the House Martins. Which is where Norman Cook, Fat Boy Slim, came from. Full circle. Oh, look at that! Uh, and they, they, the lead singer of it is a guy with a beautiful voice. And I saw a concert when I was in England briefly, uh, studying abroad for six months or whatever, like you do. Hey, what was her name? Oh, hey. No, thank you. <laughs> Improv training kicking in. No, thank you. Yeah, no, that's um, not what you're supposed to say. And this guy just has a beautiful voice, and he did lean on me, uh, and but he did it with a cigarette in his mouth the whole time. That was, fucking rocks. And like in my memory, he had a, a, a bottle of bourbon as well. Yeah. Um, he spiritually did, even if he didn't physically have that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, he, it was a duet with someone who like was a soul guy from the 60s. And then like a whole choir came out and sang. The, but, but like the guy who's hitting the high notes is smoking a cigarette. And it was just like, yeah, that's that's Cig- something. Cigarette culture is so weird when you look back at what people were doing mm-hmm. when they were smoking. And you're just like, oh, you were like a doctor. What in like watch? in the waiting room smoking or I in the office. I just watched the thing that was so much smoking. That's why I like. Oh, uh, Russian Doll. 
a fair yeah right I, I know that they're the fake cigarettes like the way they do it because could you imagine working on the set of mad men if they mm. used real cigarettes everybody would no. just look a thousand years old No, and i grew up in a coffee shop in college right where there was cigarettes inside. oh yeah i remember uh my dad smoked marlboro lights forever like the smell of marlboro lights is mm-hmm. comforting to me mm. and i can pick the smell of a marlboro light out from any other cigarette do you think that's boston what, Marlboro Lights? <laughs> Being able to pick out the smell of a Marlboro Light. I think it's just because I was so inundated with that smell. Like, anytime yeah. I was around my dad, I knew... But I, like, do you think that might be a common experience? I think so. Like, I am not from Boston. I think if your parents... That, that is a weird stereotype to assume <laughs> that just people... I'm also not from Boston, technically. I'm from a farm. Okay. Like, I grew up on a farm in central Massachusetts. Well, the way you pronounce farm is very Boston to farm. me. Farm. <laughs> oh, no, that's too much. I grew up on a farm. I think it's just if you have parents that are smokers Mm -hmm. and that they have one brand that they stick with forever, you equate that scent Mm -hmm. with love. Well, for some of us, you know, like, yeah, yeah, of of, (laughs) of genuine emotional neglect and yet the attempts at trying to build uh, build a relationship with your with your really embarrassing children. Yeah. (laughs) My dad has such better kids now because they're the ones he clearly wanted. (laughs) Do you think that's a farm thing? Well, I mean, because here's the or thing. Like All right, I'll put it this way. My dad my dad had my brother and I when we were very young. And uh, so my dad grew up on the farm, very like, you know, hard work is what you do, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's just this is part of it. But I was born in, in the 80s when Nintendo had come out. And I was a big boy and I ate. <laughs> I, I was very, very, I was over overweight. I was obese. I was an obese little boy. And I just wanted to play video games because they were f- awesome. Because video games were amazing. Uh, and I wanted to do that. And my dad couldn't really relate mm-hmm. to that mentality because, you know, if if we were born in the 70s, before that was like really a thing, you wouldn't have that disconnect. But the, the technological mm-hmm. disconnect was so wide mm-hmm. between the two of us, even though the age wasn't. He was only, he was like 20. But... Then later, you know, 20 years after that, Mm -hmm. you know, he starts again and has two kids. And these kids are like athletes. Like Mm -hmm. I wasn't an athlete. I mean, I played sports, but I wasn't like an actual like prime athlete until I was in college when I started boxing. Mm -hmm. These kids are like hockey prodigies Mm -hmm. and like baseball all stars. And like my dad's just probably so excited about it. And he quit smoking, which is unfair. Mm-hmm. So they don't know what love smells like. They don't know what that smells like at all. They just know like the general support because <laughs> they decided to do something that he wanted them to do instead of just playing Mike Tyson's punch out the whole time. <laughs> it's like a sport. Yeah. It presents in many sports like ways. Yeah. Yeah. Esports are a thing. <laughs> oh my God. If my dad found out about esports, I don't think, I feel like he's been sheltered from that because if my dad ever found out about esports, he'd probably lose his damn mind. Now, what's an esports? Like, like professional gaming. Okay. Yeah, like so, like you know, League of Legends tournaments and stuff like that. League of Legends is a video game. It sure is, mm-hmm. and it's huge. It's, it's huge. A, it's, oh, yes, it is. These things are big. Like, um, you know, like esports is a massive. Who business. does League of Legends? Is it Blizzard or is yes? It, that sounds right. Right. They, I don't know. I went to the company that, like the the building Blizzard, where they do it in Burbank. No, in Santa Monica, mm, towards Santa Monica, like Culver City. Yeah, in the Culver City. So it's not. I think is it like. So it's, forget, not it's not, it's not because Blizzard, I think was in Burbank. Um, but a, fr- it's a, a friend of mine worked there and like we had lunch there. People listening are mm-hmm. losing their minds right they showed now. showed me around. Cause they, yeah. And the thing, the thing that I most vividly remember is that I was there the day after the Falconer. Cause this is the kind of place where they have a courtyard of where course. you can eat your lunch. But if you do it, at, if you do it under regular circumstances, you're going to get pigeon shit all over. So once a week they bring the Falconer to chase away and kill all the pigeons of course so that you could have your lo- hmm i wonder if this is an industry secret oh, i didn't sign like, anything anyway uh i was thought it was really oh i'm you missed the falconer doing his work you totally missed the falconer mm-hmm. yeah which is in the present i don't know how often you encounter falconers i would say but all I think the time do, i think that hollywood has probably more falconers than most because that's not just a function of this place that wants to keep a clean except for pigeon blood where the pigeon used to be uh oh yeah right right, like it's it's a noise thing like i i know sets have like bring a falconer in to get rid of the birds yeah i would think so or like like, i remember we used to keep uh uh, fake owls 
Yes. That was our big thing. Uh, Riot Games. It's Riot. Riot. Yeah. Send and your I letters did, to them. I did know that. When I was an Uber driver, I used to drive. Um, I used to drive. John a lot, Riot? A lot of, um, <laughs> no, a lot of these professional gamers oh, yeah. from like Europe that they all lived like, and they would go to the campus and just play the game. And I was like, does this get boring? He's like, yep. He's like, it sure does. Mm. I sure, I sure like getting the money that I get, but boy, is this a boring job. Wow. And I was like, I couldn't imagine that whole, like, you know, find something you love to do, make money doing it. And then you will eventually hate that thing. I didn't hate my thing. I haven't to do other things. I haven't hit that yet. Yeah. That's, that's the thing is like, I I haven't hit that level of me not wanting to do this anymore. Although sometimes when I'm doing the Batman stuff, I'm like, do I have to take these notes right now because i i'm like meticulous about notes mm-hmm. i can't just re- recall oh sure orders of events no so i i have to take very st- specific notes so if i'm doing like a one hour episode of like the batman podcast it takes me four hours of prep it's a lot it's a lot it's of sure, it's, i take a lot of I, I basically just transcribe the entire scripts of like batman cartoons and stuff how much batman could there be there's so much Oh my God, Ben, there's so much. And it, it's never going to stop. Oh, not now. We've done... That new Batman movie is three hours long. It sure is. Every time you watch it. We did a whole month on the um, Snyder Cut. I'm sorry. I know. Do you know how much time I spent doing the Snyder Cut? And you can't say anything about it or they'll come for you. Oh, I make fun of it all the time. Do they come for you? My, my co-host wrote an article about it on Collider, about how funny it was that Darkseid shows up in the planet in the beginning and just gets immediately f- up and like a sh- axe buried in his shoulder by david thulis by Ares, just like and it's just like so our introduction to this huge villain is that he got f- in his dick pushed in the dirt <laughs> just <Pushed. laughs> just the slowest way to send someone's dick dirtward just just got he just got f- bodied so hard and <laughs> and and he wrote like a very funny article but it's about how like Dark side, the big bad, his introduction isn't showing up and kicking ass. It's literally getting his ass kicked and then leaving. And they're like, better look out for this guy. It's like, I think we got him. <laughs> and then all the fans were like, actually, that was Uxus. And he didn't discover this. And it's like, well, that's not said in the movie. So <laughs> th- so like what at what person watching the movie would ever f- know that? It's just so many people are grasping desperately at straws because you can't admit that Zack Snyder is not good at scripts. He's a beautiful visionary filmmaker who writes dog shit scripts. I, I think I tweeted a tweet that was like, had Chris, had Chris free Superman in a gif. Yeah. And maybe I, I think I was like, it would have been cool if he used heat vision to like, uh, burn that guy's hand off or whatever. Yeah. I don't remember. It was some like the most cast aside bullshit. Like, I am not thinking about this. Yeah. I just like had a thought and put it out there and they came for me like I oh. assaulted their mothers. I just, I'm just like, what are I you like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in having this conversation. Yeah. I'm not like engaging you or anything. Like, like what you like. I love that you like what you like. I, I, I want you to like what you like. Don't do it at me. I'm not talking about it. And, um, <laughs> typical blue check mark has the conversation as long as he wants and then doesn't like, and that's it. Perfect. I can't do I can't do anything in here. I uh bye. So I, I'm I'm the type of person mute, mute, block, mute, block. I'm the person that's just like, hey, f- you. Mm. Like that, and that's probably bad. It's bad to be that person, I think. I don't that's the one Massachusetts thing that I really did hold on to that's thing. probably yeah. bad. <laughs> it's probably bad for me career wise, where if somebody's was like, I don't like the way you did that, and I'll just be like, I don't f- care. <laughs> like I don't eat sh- make your own <laughs> podcast. You, uh, we're the network trying to give you a note on the thing that yeah. we're collaborating on. F- you, no, f- yourself. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like I famously was speaking out, uh, not famously, but <laughs> I was speaking out about certain issues, and people were like, "Hey, stop talking about this, please. We 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 gotta we gotta sell these things." And I was like, "I'm not gonna do that." <laughs> and then they were like, well, "We can't work together anymore." I was like, "You sure?" <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Damn, all right, bye." And they're like, wait, bye? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep doing the thing. I mean, there's other reasons too, but they're, they're, we're all better off without me there. <laughs> like, it's so mysterious. It's no me. secret. You know all about it. It's no secret. Like, it's, it's like sideshow. They're so much better without me. And, right. and uh, you know, same. 
likewise. I, I like being here, but it was very funny. Like when I was just they were like, you gotta not say that we have to keep, we have to stay in business, please. Mm. Like your, our name is in your bio. Like <laughs> stop saying these things about cops. And I was like, I'm oh. going to keep saying these things. Interesting. Yeah. And they're like, stop it. I was like, I'll take the name out. They're like, the damage has been done, sir. <laughs> and I'm like, Ugh, fine. Uh, and this is all right. I, has this been on this podcast? Like, I hate to. No, I've I've, I've talked I've talked about it before. I'm I'm very open about it. Like, I don't I try not to keep repeating it over and over again. But I think it's objectively funny. Mm-hmm. Um, of like of like getting fired and why, and then realizing just how good it was for me. I love ninety nine point nine percent of the people mm-hmm. that that were that are there the i mean there's only one person i don't like and that's because they were the one that like tried to get me in trouble and i'm like well you're a coward mm-hmm. but everybody else i'm like yeah it's fine like i get it of course i get it i'm not an idiot like like i still love the people there it's just you know maybe i shouldn't be working really hard to make other people money and i should just be doing my thing that sounds good yeah yeah but you were gonna say you all robocops are robo bastards i didn't have anything that's a good one <laughs> I think I did a joke where I was like, all cops are bastards except RoboCop because he already died as a cop. <laughs> yeah. Like he, Murphy was a bastard. <laughs> so a um, couple of things. We got we got Thrilling Adventure Hour. Um, you, uh, you you like got scoops. That's huh? new information has not been part of that. I mean, this is what it is all about. Yeah. This is what it's all about here. We get the scoops. You get the scoops. And li- literally tens of people <laughs> right? will have access to this information. It's great. Um, one of the things that's interesting uh, about doing this show, which is fun, is that I actually uh, have producers. They give me some money, and then I say their name out loud. Classic. I thought this was going to turn into a windfall for me for a second. Oh, no. You can't have anything. <laughs> Fair. It says it right here. No, it says it right here in the notes. It gets by nothing. name, or which is guest. weird. Does it yeah. say guest or does it say? No, it says it says um, all guests except Ben. Get so it's a very specific uh, situation. Wow. Well, do you want to say their names or whatever? As a matter of fact, I would love to say their names out loud. Well, uh, that's great for them. And if you want to have me read your name out loud, head to patreon.com slash Jeff May and sign up for the producer tier. And you can have me and uh, Ben or another guest uh, say and then comment on their names. So uh, first and foremost, I want to shout out Ricky Cilantro. Uh, <laughs> I don't like cilantro. I tell you what, you're going to get a lot of names. You're going to be like, I have no clue what you're talking about. And uh, correct. Uh, a lot of inside jokes are going to be in here. You right. just roll with it. But you can comment on anything you want, such as the name Big Booty Boy for 2069. What could you do with that? I don't know. It's a weird, it's his Christian name too, That's fair. which is weird. Um, shout out to the most well-prepared dead guy. Jumping rope, still a sport. Jeff not liking it, still a fact. Because I don't even like Probably sports. Gag, yeah. It sure is. Uh, bodacious, big, bad, bouncing, bollock bonanza. Shout out to uh, Jennifer Fendelander at AV Foundry, Patrick Doré, Bart Fartigan, two Stevens in a comfy box. No V's allowed. I have a dog named Steven that has no V's. You have a dog named Steven? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so nice. I like that's a good, that's a good, strong dog name. Like Steve. Steve. No, not Steve. He's Steven. Steven. Yeah. He takes his walks with a dog named Peter. They're urbane gentlemen dogs. Steven and Peter. Do they have little like, like house coats and stuff <laughs> that they wear when they go out? That's right. I had a cat named Cat Jeff. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He's with the ex now, or she is, uh, and I miss her very much. I convinced my friend to name her cat your mom. Oh, that's, um, I know somebody that also has a cat named your mom. She named the other cat my mom. Is Are they a comedian? Yes, they are. Are they a comedian in Philadelphia? That's right. Shout out. There you go. Almost a shout out. <laughs> right? Shout out to Michelle Balloon. There you go. Uh, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I, I've stayed at her place when I was on tour. <laughs> uh, and then uh, with with, with um, Tenny, yes. Uh, shout outs to I just named Tenny, who I put um, in the Star Wars universe, a robot named Tenny. I didn't even realize that. I didn't make that connection. Holy sh! Yeah, because in in um, it wasn't the main one. It, uh, that was Ag. That was Steve Ag. <laughs> oh, we have good times here. Um, so uh, shout out to Huey Nerd Numbers. Jeff has comely feet. Uh, that means my feet are covered in cum. Uh, Andrew, you don't even like Batman McGuire. Shout out to Rudy. What's your favorite Pokemon, Rueda? Do you have a favorite Pokemon? Uh, no. Steven. Never, never seen a, th- a single Pokemon. Steven. That's I your favorite. I almost did Pokemon. a podcast about 
somebody explaining Dragon Ball Z to me. Doesn't sound fun. It might have been. It might not have been. We didn't do it. Fair. Uh, shout out to Goji, Gregarious Gregorio, a.k.a. Rad Mummy. Kool-Aid Molotov says Twitter jail sucks, but telling Ted Cruz to fall onto a box of scorpions with poop-tipped stingers was worth it. Agreed. Agreed. We should be threatening more people and wishing harm upon them. Or and I genuinely, a handful of people. I genuinely believe that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's sh- a secret. Uh, shout out to Gerard Ruane. Uh, Farty Marty tried Jeff's egg-based diet and all he got was this stupid nickname. You like eggs? I eat a lot of eggs, like a lot of eggs. I realized the other day, if this is the time for stories, I will tell it. Sure, yeah, it's always the time for stories. You know when you go to a diner and you're like, uh, uh, you order an egg dish and they're like, how do you like your eggs? Yeah. It only just occurred to me that you're allowed to say soft scramble. Sure. Like, in you can say over easy, over medium, over hard. Like that, it never it occurred it, to you that you could never do... occurred to me that you could say you could. It has always been my experience. It's like I would a say wet scrambled 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 egg. I would say scramble. I'd hope they would give me a soft scramble. But no, there's a name for that. And so that you can ask for it. Yes. And they will give it to you. That's. I actually order my eggs over medium well, which is a weird way to do it. Yeah, but that's a weird way to do here's it. Here's the thing. I like a runny yolk. Uh-huh. I will vomit if my white is runny. All right. And so sometimes if you're not clear that you need that white firm, mm-hmm. you'll get one and you cut into it and it's like that white juice comes out. And mm. I'm just like, I'm going to puke my fucking guts out right now. Mm. So I always, or, or I'll just be like, uh, firm white runny yolk. Yeah, that's I think that's safe and, for you. But then people look at me like I'm a diva, and I'm just like, well, I'm sorry, I don't want to puke in the diner. But also, like you're asking me how I want my eggs, I'm giving you the most efficient yeah. description. I remember one time I had asked about chocolate milk at a diner. Mm-hmm. I was like, do you make your own, or does it come out of a jug? And they were like, oh, it's a no, jug. It's... And I'm just like, I'm gonna pass and just uh, get water. Yeah. And the people behind me were like talking. Sh- on me about that they were like having a discussion with each other to the point where i just turned around mm-hmm. and i was just like you know i'm allowed to want the things i want mm-hmm. and just not buy them if i don't want them you f-ing idiot like i could it, it blew my mind that somebody would have a, a loud conversation about that and it blew their mind that you didn't want i didn't want the thing that they would accept without thinking yeah well, you're, uh, I'm no. just no. I I like it when they make the chocolate milk yeah. where it's not aggressively chocolatey. It's not get, heavy. You're gonna get yeah. You're gonna get a homemade hand. You're gonna get like maybe a tall. You get the the extra. Yeah, yeah. Or like and you see the little chocolate sauce on the side mm-hmm. of the glass. I love that. Mm-hmm. What I don't love is a extra heavy, thick, viscous chocolate milk experience. Mm-hmm. I don't want it. I don't want that plastic chocolate milk. Right. And these people were like, ooh. And I'm like, I'm not a fucking diva just because I want to enjoy the things that I pay for. Yeah, I asked the question so I could get the answer. Yeah. I got the answer. I made my decision. Yeah. What do you care? If this wasn't an option, the lady wouldn't even ask me what I wanted. She'd just be like, you're eating uh, pancakes today. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. I get the chair. Oh, I'd love some pancakes right now. I'm not going to lie. Uh, um, okay, so anyway, shout out to Funky J. Show me in the rules where it says a dog can't play basketball, which it's probably in the rules now. Oh, yeah, they have to put it in the rules by now. Yeah, by now they were like, and also. Yeah, no, like rule one, this is for humans. Yeah, this is a game for human people. Uh, Gray man of the nightmare potluck. Everyone is welcome at the table. Jeff using deep blue sea memes to break bad news. Sorry about the death of Betty White being broke to some people by me making a deep blue sea reference. Is that those smart sharks? Deepest bluest. My hat is like a shark's fin. LL Cool J. (laughs) Best song ever. Sure. Is it, you're familiar with the zombies, the the like, group, the like, zombies, or uh, like the, the kings? time of the season. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm aware. There's some good songs, is all I'm saying. Like, this is, it's, what a weird, <laughs> what a weird two bands to throw at me as like, you know, there are much better songs like the zombies and the kinks, which Those like, sure. They're, albums I mean, I mean, yeah, yes, yeah, so, yeah. of course. But yeah. also at the same time, I'm like, those are, those are your two, not like the Beatles and Stones or something. Well, you, like, you I think. I think my favorite song is a Kinks. No, is a zombie song. But I think that most people's favorite song is a Kinks song, which is Waterloo Sunset. Fair. You think everybody's favorite song is Waterloo Sunset by the Kinks? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. That is ninety nine percent of Americans. Very like everyone everywhere's favorite song. Like when pressed or when like when yeah. when really pressed, they're yeah. really like, I gotta tell you, I gotta be honest. It's a Kinks song that you probably don't know. Um, but hum it for unless, me. Unless you like yeah. headlight at Largo sometimes. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that's a very specific. That is such a weird <laughs> and dumb example. And I am 
blown away. I, I just fell in love with myself. That again. is that is so. You oh. found your joy, and it's by naming the dumbest f-ing song as like this is most people's favorite song. <laughs> not everyone. You know, not mine. Not. <laughs> Not everyone's favorite song. I would say 98% of America's favorite song. In the world. The other 2%, Sugar Sugar by the Archies. Okay, uh, now, can we talk about how many great songs the Archies have? The Archies is great. Jingle Jangle, <laughs> Bang Shang a Lang, uh, so, You Little Angel You, I was gonna Waldo, P. Emerson Jones. It, There's so it, many good songs. It took several attempts for us to have non-nonsense words be the title <laughs> of the songs. Oh my God, you know, there's so many great Archie songs like Shebang Shebang. <laughs> right? Beep bop boop bop. Um, yeah, beep bop boop bop. Huge. <laughs> that was when the robot joined the band. Of course. And then uh, let's not let's not forget, of course, the, the Judy Jetson's favorite song, <laughs> Eep Op, Eep Op, Ork, Ork uh uh-uh, That's right. Uh, which still in my head to this day. Well, sure. They put and out that cover album. America's favorite song, yeah. of course, uh, is <laughs> Eep Op, Ork, uh-uh. That's in the future, stupid. The, <laughs> we're in the future now. So. Oh, all right. Oh, so you mean we that the kinks aren't up. contemporary reference? No, it's <laughs> you're like you know what the best Christmas song is? Father Christmas by the Kinks. It's a good Christmas. It's one of my there's favorites. like five good Christmas songs. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna beat the Christ out of you for saying that. <laughs> I'm such a Christmas guy. I that, made a mix of here are the good Christmas songs, and it's maybe five songs long. I'm I, we totally disagree with you on that one. There are <laughs> no, you can't an, disagree there, that I made this mix. No, I'm gonna disagree it's a with Spotify your opinion. playlist. I guess you disagree. Yeah, I'm. I've never agreed with a Spotify playlist, <laughs> unless it's like here's an album and these are the songs on the album, and then I'm like, all right, I'll get. Check out this one Spotify playlist called everyone's favorite everyone's song. favorite songs. It's two one, songs. It's song. just. <laughs> <laughs> It's huge. That'd be so funny if like the comments were just like, yeah, that is my favorite song. Like everybody in the comments is just like, no, he's right about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, does this go out to everybody? Because they will. They'll be huge 98%. fans. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shout out. Cough. <laughs> Ty- Tyler Wilgus asking seven in the time since he changed his name on this document, Jez Butt had a kid, got a new job and got COVID. Uh, shout out to you, Jez Butt. I only did one of those things. Um, and that is I had your kid. Uh, shout out to Kimball, the casual Frankenstein, the target loss prevention officer currently hunting Jeff. I shoplift at Target. Nice. I steal M&Ms every time I go to Target. F- That's exactly what I say. <laughs> and people are like, really? I'm like, fuck them. Uh, Steven, good thing I have snacks. There's two Stevens and they're engaged in a name war oh. on the on the document, which is great. Um, Hawkins Cheesies, a Canadian delicacy. Mr. Billy Beck, Cody Beck, Mike Gouts, Lisa McCarty, a, uh, at Comics Book Girl, G-U-R-L and X in comics. She works at uh, Austin Games and Books. Nice. Ever been there? No, I've been to Austin, but not Games and Books. Wow, so you went to Austin, but you didn't go to the local comic I shop? I only just found out about it. You are a bigot. There, Whoa. I said it. I said it. Uh, I was a comicsology boy, and now I don't know what to do. Comicsology. Yeah. You're going to go go to an LCS, man. Support the businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where do I put them? In long boxes. Oh. I'm full of long boxes. I've got long boxes coming out of my drawers. So go through and dump some of your books. Do you ever do a purge? Do you ever do a comics purge? You know, I did at the beginning of COVID. I was like, my friend who has a kid, I was like... This kid's going to get some comics out of this. Yeah. And I did a little purge. How many books did you get rid of? Well, I haven't. <laughs> it became COVID. Like, it was right at the start of the thing. I was You've like, had two years. This. I've had two years, but, like, nobody's coming. The kid's, no, no t- kids the kid graduated. Over. Yeah, he's not, the kid's, he's not a kid anymore. That's right. Yeah. No, I think I, ha- I, think I have to go back and re- <laughs> reorganize. And yeah. These were the boxes that were going to go. But I think it was going to give away three boxes. I, I sold, like, eight or ten long boxes. Um, and I essentially just buck a booked them mm-hmm. and made so much money off of books that I wasn't reading That's great. and wasn't going through. And I've, I've really, and I pared it down and then I've just rebuilt it back up. Yeah. It's yeah, a problem. No, I, yeah. Fair. It's, it's a problem, but I also like supporting local comic shops. Like that's I huge for me. Theory. Yeah. But like the comicsology made it so easy to always be able to read the. Yeah. But who got the money? Am, uh, Amazon, right? Well now I would, I will never. No, now it's Amazon, but Amazon's why it's terrible now. Yeah, I mean, Amazon is one of the reasons the world is terrible That's now. Right. And it's created awful people. It, for one day, like same day delivery has created the worst f- people. Because I honestly feel like it's that internet culture of wanting immediate mm-hmm. 
uh, immediate customer service and satisfaction and m- demanding that it happens. And if if something is going to take 12 days to get to you, you're like, well, I'm not even going to buy it anymore. Oh, I'm going to buy it. Oh, I hate that. I I I I do not put money into Amazon's hands at all. I watch their shows, but that's because I steal a Prime membership. Good. F- them. F- them. Steal their M and M's. The tar- Yeah, I'm gonna steal. I'm gonna steal Amazon's M and M's. I'm gonna watch Upload and Invincible and all those great shows that are on Amazon. You, did you not like Invincible? Oh, I'm not gonna comment on. You're allowed to. I, no. You're allowed to enjoy or not enjoy things. That's right. But as an industry professional, I try not to. Fair enough. You know. But the semi- co- but semi- the semi- comic pro. is not the cartoon as well. Oh, so yeah, you know, no, I like, like the comic. Yeah. There you I go. Like the comic. See, I I just found an issue number one I, that I had in my one of my boxes. I was like, I should mm-hmm. probably get this graded, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did. It's the Larry's Comics version, which is like it's ultra rare too. Okay, uh, this show is brought to you by Ashelis and his tortoise, Doctor DNA. Shout out, uh, thank you, Doctor DNA. Uh, shout out to Thor, creature feature, creature feet Thor. Do you ever see the the metal musician Thor? No. We're going to YouTube him at some point in time. You're really going to enjoy that because that guy is something. If I don't like heavy metal, will, will I I hate it? heavy metal, All but right. you'll still enjoy it because it is absurd. So you do sports shows for people who don't like sports? Uh-huh. You have heavy metal for people who don't like heavy metal? Okay, so this guy is a body, a Canadian bodybuilder turned mm-hmm. metal musician that used to do like feats of strength mm-hmm. and do like, and his songs are just like hilariously bad. Mm-hmm. To the point that they're f- like fun. They're fun, bad songs. And and some of them are pretty catchy. All right. And uh, like overly, pro- like overproduced. Mm-hmm. Like you could tell that there's like a lot of, a lot of thumbs in the pie. Like the real Thor's music would be. Kind of. Yeah. It's really funny. The guy looked like He-Man. Like he he was like a big. Why not look like Thor? Like why not commit to looking like Thor? Because He-Man was like a copywritten character. Thor is a god. Okay. So, I mean, he was just like this, he was big, muscly dude, but kind of like, do you ever do an Oops All uh, Producers episode of the show? Because I feel like we're just as good here. As I mean, it might as well be like the, the fun part about the producer stuff is it does, it does spur fun mm-hmm. conversation. I don't think we're going to talk. Oh, we've got plenty of time. We got plenty of time. I'm uh, let's see. Shout out to, I'm never going to have a history podcast. You little shits, So stop asking. Shout out to the scene in meet Joe Black where Brad Pitt dies. Mackenzie Sisyphus may be happy, but he's into CrossFit, so f*** him, chill. Shout out to Instagram and Twitter's at Bob underscore of underscore skull. Bring back Pepsi Blue. Ooh, all right. Shout out to Lemming Malloy, Norm from Cheers. Extra special shout out to Norm from Cheers because he goes through and fi- with a fine tooth comb, picks out all of my curse words. Will he pick out mine? He f- sh- f- may f- right, f- he will. <laughs> he f- may right, he will. And he sends me a little list and then I send it to my editor and it saves him the time to edit. Do you, I heard that on the episode I was listening to on the way here. I, um, I wonder what you do with those lists. Like, is that like a reward on your? I eat them. Patreon? Do you go like just here's a list of each episode? I did post words? one. I did post one on. And you Inst- get like a supercut. I posted. I screenshotted one of the lists, and it was really long. It's gonna be a good list. And I just screenshotted it, and I think I posted it on Instagram, and I said a rather vulgar episode is coming your way. But I would love to as a subscriber get the feed that's just well the subscribers get it unedited yes but if they were able to get like a three minute cut of all the swears in isolation man i wonder how much extra that would cost me for my editor he's gonna email me after he listens to this and be like well i could probably throw it together for an extra 10 bucks and i'll be like yeah that's fine or if he was just like if you can get 11 bucks if he's like for it then you're yeah in the pink and if he's like it's gonna be like 90 dollars and i'll be like we're gonna pass on that he's taking them out anyway where are you putting them uh fair enough (laughs) Yeah. Right? I don't know how this works. Mm. This is why I don't edit yeah, we're my both own podcast. This is why I don't. It's like I don't really get it. I edit one of my podcasts, and Mistake. it is my least favorite thing in the world. I f-ing hate it. I I still do it because I just can't keep. I can't keep paying other people to do it. I'm it's just not. Do you ever get creative with this? Where it's because you know there's going to be a list of them. Um, no, but sometimes I'll be like f- tits ass, <laughs> and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see how it comes out. Oh, you know? I hope nothing bad happens. Yeah. You said all those swears. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> this podcast is gonna call your mom. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Burrito Mouth, Dan yeah, Hackroyd, uh, Taurus Bulba. Everyone, check out the 1994 comedy question mark Twin Sitters, the 90s movie, the 90s movie ever made. 
Shout out to the itty bitty Millie committee. Pity the fool. Shout out to Kelly says, get your booster, you gaslighting dip turds. Kelly, I feel like you can update your name. Let's get let's get you on the on the on the document and uh, update that name because that's been that's existed for this is like a six month name at this point in time. And all my I'd be better have gotten your booster right now. Who's the master? Show enough. Shout out to Lisa Harden. I get that reference. Yeah, you do. Shout out to Lisa Harden, also my co-producer on Mint on Card. Jessica Robertson, Silius Ruby, the Digital Phil, the Ghost of Dave Thomas. Shout out to Jocular Haggard Cantankerous Fool. Jolly Buckaroo in The Last Yeehaw. Aaron Meyer. L. Chicken Nuggets, Tenders, or Wings? Seldo. Do you have a preference? I'm sorry? Nuggets, Tenders, or Wings? Wings. Tenders. Oh, wait, are you correcting me yes. on your show because yeah. it's your show? Don't be gross, Ben. <laughs> I can't do chicken on the bone. It's disgusting. Yeah, you can't. Ugh. You know who can? Johnny Two Thumbs over here. Ben Blacker. <laughs> don't bring him into this. I don't know. He might. He might. I don't know. In Soviet Russia, we have cool Jeffs. Uh, shout out to, it was me, Jeff. I've been giving you $10 a month since the beginning so you could afford more gas station Pop-Tarts, keeping you sluggish, just slow enough for me to steal Christmas. I got memed in this uh, in this document, which is really fun. Cronenberger, Meister, Meisterburger, where's Clawful? Three Jacob Tremblies in a trench coat sneaking into an R-rated movie. Uh, shout out to Parker. Parker Aylesworth is not that tall. He has fake legs. I met Parker when I was working on the Anthony Bourdain show. I don't and Parker, I, do I know Parker? No, but Parker works in production, and he is like nine feet tall. He is the much, tallest so boy in the world. It's a lot, uh, and just the nicest guy. Shout out to Christine Salinas. Uh, Kale's only true purpose is as the garnish at a 1996 Pizza Hut buffet. She brew sleeps the pajama eye on Instagram for pictures of my feats of strength. Uh, shout out to verbose minimalist Adam Warlock. He wants your soul. Shout out to Ace of Base. Or, oh, excuse me. Shout out to Ass of Bass. My bad. Uh, local man at Gavin underscore not with two T's. Jeffrey Bezos, the worst Jeff. Nicholas, happy to pay more for this privilege. Fabian, Michael Wells. Squatch and Clippy are Jeff's coolest friends. Jeff may convince me to quit Twitter and you should quit too because it's awful. Did I? Because I'm still on it. I'm still on Twitter. Me too. Yeah? You don't want to leave because of Elon, right? I love the rumor that he's not going to buy it. I just want to stay on and keep making fun of him. Mm. Yeah, I did a couple of makeup phones. Also, too, Instagram and Facebook are earned are, are owned by a worse billionaire. Mm -hmm. And like we know now, there's no good billionaire. No, no, Elon's an edge lord billionaire. Like he he's he's if Joe Rogan was a billionaire, just like a real f dip. Sh but like Zuckerberg is like a sinister millionaire. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all a billionaire. Excuse me. Zuckerberg uh, is like weird. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is. That I'm sorry, I got suddenly super high. Yeah, that's fair. Which is weird because you don't you you have not no. engaged in in any no, uh, just in the middle medicine of the here. Yeah, you just did you want some weed? Oh, uh, no, apparently we spread it out. You already yeah. had it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, finally, shout out to when I learned Taco Bell is bringing the Mexican pizza back. I got excited, but then I got worried that that made me happy. Um, which is correct. No. You should be worried about that. That mm -hmm. is an unfortunate thing to like because yeah, the, Me the Mexican pizza is objectively a bad food item. That pizza Hut, uh, Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Yeah, they're all parodies of food. Yeah, Taco Bell at least does like the cheesy gordita crunch. It's delicious. The Mexican pizza is terrifying. Come on, have you had a cheesy gordita crunch? Come on, have you? Answer the damn question, Ben. Probably. I don't think you have because if you had, you wouldn't be so dismissive and derisive. When about were they it. invented? The cheesy gordita crunch mm -hmm. within the past ten years. After my Taco Bell time, yeah, the flavor the flavor portfolio of a cheesy gordita crunch is unbelievable. It's so good. Tell me about the flavor portfolio. It's so good. It's no, the, the like tastes are so bad, great. But what is in this portfolio? It is a it, well. It's the texture for one because it's a soft. It's a thicker so, um, soft tortilla, a gordita, if you will, uh -huh. wrapped around an actual taco, okay. sealed to it with cheese. Uh, in there, you have a regular taco, but it has like a like a creamier kind of sauce, and then you add fire sauce on it. A creamier I, kind of sauce. There's like a cre like a sour cream, maybe or something like that. I don't know what it is, but it's unbelievable. I don't question it. I just eat it because okay. it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's so good. All right. Don't don't because I know you don't believe me right now. That's right. But it's so good. It's good. What do you like to eat? I don't know. The f do you eat, man? I don't know. Have you ever been to the Palm? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Have 
I only ever go to the Palm I restaurant. The, I only eat at the Seasons. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what do you like to eat? Nothing. I don't want to be made fun of. What's your favorite fast food? I don't do fast food. Ever at all? Ever at all. Really? I mean, I, I feel, there was a moment in my life where it was like, uh, I, I'm done. When was that? Like Tuesday? Oh, I see what you did. You see? You see that? No, it wasn't Tuesday. It was a long time ago. What did you used to like? Yeah, I guess there was no like super standouts or anything. You just made like such a pained face yeah, when I asked. Like, That's so I've never seen somebody like, have like a my, non-opinion my about favorite, fast food. I think my favorite like fast food thing was high school, like a sausage McMuffin with egg. That's a great that's a damn good. That's a good breakfast. But then you like you 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 grow up, you drive somebody to the airport, you're like, it's early, there's a McDonald's, I'm gonna get the sausage McMuffin with egg, and you're like, it t- it tastes kinda like masking tape must taste like. It's not it's not it's not good, but it's good. There's um do you know it's, Richard Herring, British comedian? That name sounds familiar. He has a he has a podcast and he was on a season of Taskmaster. He has uh, on his podcast he has emergency questions. That he'll like in, ca- in, in case of emergency break glass, ask these silly questions, and one mm-hmm. of them is about traveling in time. If you could time travel, where what food would you eat? I think is the gist of it because in his mind, he either they changed the flavor of his favorite potato chips, or he's changed and he wants to know which it is. Okay, so yeah, he wants to go back and have his brand of yeah. Hmm. If I could go, if I could travel in time. And eat, to eat a thing. A- anything. Mm-hmm. I would go to the 1400s mm-hmm. and eat a person. Oh, just to see. Did they do? Did they serve a lot of people in the 1400s? I don't know. They I'd probably s- weren't healthy to eat in the 1400s. Probably, probably like like a marbled, uh, a, a decently marbled, but relatively lean. Is this like a Cal- Caligula times? No, the Caligula times is was like BC. 300 BC, yeah. right? 1400 is just like that's that's. You know why I picked it? It's the Black Death play. It's the oh, the plague. Don't eat times. the people in the plague. I want to see what's up. Just get, getting that's confused. That's, no, I don't know. I would that's probably like uh, fugu stuff, right? I would probably. I think everybody would go back to when they were like nine and eat something that yeah, they loved as a kid. Because I remember, like, it's one of those things where people there's this this mythos that the things that we grew up with are so great. Mm-hmm. When you hear like people are just like, oh, ecto cooler. Mm. And it's like, do you remember what that tastes like? Because it's mm-hmm. It tastes like Yeah. Nostalgia is not a flavor. <laughs> and when you finally have these things when they're back, you're like, yeah. Like, it's yeah. actually not good. Like, go watch an episode of Scooby-Doo. That doesn't hold up. We watched the Scooby-Doo Batman ones from the up. 70s, and they are wild. Mm-hmm. They are just, un- like, they... It's they're offensively written in that there's no rhyme or reason to any decisions any process, any storytelling whatsoever. It's just clearly two dudes got mega high hmm. and wrote the weirdest I thing. I wonder how long Cass Elliot had been dead before I saw the episode of Scooby-Doo where they met Cass Elliot. Right? Like, it was weird when they would do those, like, the Scooby-Doo, the new Scooby-Doo movies, I think is what they called them in, the, like, the 1970s, where they're like, it's Scooby-Doo and the Three Stooges, you know, from, like, 30 years before we made this. <laughs> Is that true? Well, the Three Stooges, what, they were in the 40s, right? That was like... Their like, heyday or they died? Their heyday was in like the 40s, right? That sounds right. Because I remember like, didn't Mo do a Hitler thing? So that you kind of feel like that's <laughs> something. Uh, say more. Uh, I think there was a there was a Hitler version of something that happened in the Three Stooges. Hmm. But and then like these movies came out in what, 1972? And you're just like, are people still... Clamoring for uh, can we get Dana Gould on the line? Was there a Stooges in the seventies? I could I could call him, I guess, but that would be a weird guest thing to have. <laughs> Just give us a brief history of the seventies yeah. perspective of the Three Stooges. Yeah, he, he's probably yeah he's going to be like I'm working right now. This like, is why your you, work. This is your work. He's, like, Dana he's Gould. probably like, why are you calling? You never call. And I'm just like, <laughs> real quick, me and Ben Acker have a question about the Three Stooges. Oh, Ben Acker has a question about the Three Stooges. They were active from 1922 until 1970. Well, so it might have been like rest their souls. Here's but, one last. It kind of like it feels, but like to do that, to do that, cause these things were produced in 1972. So I'm trying to think you of like firm on that date. Do you know that? Yes. You know because that? I, I you, was, you, yeah. Cause you're a Batman. Expert. I, well, yeah. I, I just, I relatively recently watched yeah. it within the past, like three months. Sure. I watched these things and I think I still accidentally 
have not canceled the boomerang subscription on Valerie's Amazon account. She's fine with it. Uh, she she's, told me to tell you. she's really not. She's still going to tell you. She's cool. <laughs> she's, I, I, I was like, you should probably cancel this. She's like, I'll get to it. I'm like, I don't know how to cancel anything on Amazon. I just know how to steal Amazon. <laughs> um, so you're going to want to fix this. And also, can you cancel your Amazon? What is boomerang? It's like the it's the the Hanna Barbera and Looney Tunes. It's like a cartoon mm. Netflix channel kind of thing. It's really seems like a bad deal. There was um a moment where I wanted those sound effects specifically for our show. Yeah. And they didn't exist online. Like it was a moment where it had just been taken, like scrubbed from online. Really? Yeah. Like you couldn't get you couldn't find the, those specific like the and stuff like that like all the super friends I wanted super friend stuff okay specifically and uh, it was it was one of those like you look back on your time in Hollywood and measure your success in certain ways right like oh if you can get somebody who just moved here a job like you're a cool Hollywood yeah. dude yeah hell yeah and this was like I bet I can get this in two phone calls <laughs> and like in one. I got somebody grab me a bundle of like authentic Hanna Barbera sound effects. Really? Here's every one of them. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty, it was like pretty woo. dope for this. Like, God, that's everything so cool. from Super Friends, everything from like, I mean, all of them, Flintstones, God, all the like Hanna Barbera that. stuff. Oh man, that's like the specific sound of starting a car with your feet. You know, yeah, that that that. Oh, I like that a lot. Um. So real quick, and, and kind of one of the reasons that I, I jumped on on you here is that you j- just kind of announced that you have a book coming out. That's right. You have a book called Stories to Keep You Alive Despite Vampires. I have a <laughs> physical copy in my hand, mm-hmm. but I also, uh, you sent me a digital copy. That's right. And I, I read through uh, a portion of it. It's a longer book than uh, you'd think. It, it's, it is a long, when I saw this, I was like, oh, like scary stories to tell in the dark. Yes. And then I'm like, no, this is like novel size. <laughs> but that's the thing. I mean, that's what they do now. Like, Fair. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. So this is, my summary might not be accurate. So I'm going to say it. And then you tell me what I'm on. So basically you've written a sort of, in world anthology of a sort of of like kind of tongue in cheek horror for kids ish i think yes it, yes absolutely yes yeah i i wrote a um a book i i had in mind a short a book of short stories in mm-hmm. the in the like spirit of scary stories to tell in the dark yes um but with uh i don't know so, to be able to play around with spooky and silly and legit scary and, and keeping in mind that writing for kids and writing for adults, the way we've done it in like thrilling adventure hour is not dissimilar. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started, the editor said, think about a framing device, which gave it a narrative structure around the anthology aspect. And he said, and think about um, recurring elements Within the stories, whatever that means to you, mm-hmm. and that <laughs> that meant a lot to me. It was it became a game of like, oh, this story that I thought was done has a, a part two or part three, or th- this crosses over with that in an interesting way. And so there's like, did you have when you were writing this? Was there a lot of like the yarn connecting to different? Um, yes, and there's one story in it that has and- like the most, like the the deepest into the piece, the the last one that I wrote. Was yeah no all, all sorts of characters from kind all of sorts of stories ties are it all in together tied in here yeah the 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 thing that I first noticed and I think that most people should notice is that the narrator's the narrator speaks mm-hmm. in a very specific tone that I don't think we've really seen in a kind of story like this narration mm-hmm. in horror tends to be more of the surling. Mm -hmm. Um, style and this is not that no this is breathless i'm in this situation and the reason i need to tell you these stories is very important because there's vampires and if you're here where i am which is the only way you found this book yeah you need to know how to get out of this and it's it's really good and like like because some of the stories these are some of them you're are just like teeming with like irony and twists and turns Mm -hmm. and and tongue-in-cheek jokes and uh, and, and and actual horror, the illustrations are really oh God, rad. The illustrations are amazing. Scott they, Buono Cristo. They, they do harken back to, I mean, obviously, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark has a very specific illustration style that will always, there are certain illustrations and illustrators that are always going to be 
I wanted themselves. That. I wanted that so much. I wanted, even and, if the story isn't scaring the hell out of you, I want the illustration to scar you. And this is, these illustrations are great. They, they, they are, are really fun. They, they accent the book really well. And I've really enjoyed what I've read so far. And I'm excited right. to dive deeper into there. Cause you said, cause you, you were like, here it is. And I was like, oh, this is like 140 pages. Oh, it's, it's more than that. And then you were like, well, yeah. Zach Sherwin read it on the plane <laughs> somewhere. I'm like, well, I'm not on a plane. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I'm not no, Zach Sherwin. I, they're, I've, the, <laughs> I, I got the, they're called advanced reader copies. Yeah. Arcs. This is, I'm new to this part of like this creative act. And so like all of the terms of art are exciting to me. So these advanced reader copies showed up at my door uh, just as I was about to drive Zach Sherwin uh, to the Burbank airport to go to Austin for a comedy festival. And Zach was an early encourager of my writing and prose. Mm -hmm. And so it felt just right to be able to pick him up, hand him a book. Right. And so, and, and so he was extra excited to like open it right then and like read the thing and, um, and text just encouraging, encouraging sweet things from that guy. And, uh, I have a very funny Zach Sherwin story. for And, uh, and it was, yeah. So it was nice to, to have him be, Reader one, um, I just had my first. Uh, I've handed it out to a handful of people as I see them, uh, but my first friend, who's a dad, who's reading it to his kid, oh, cool. experience of him just texting me like the reaction of a kid because I have. I thought that there would be a heavier editorial hand on like, hey, no, this is for kids and this is not for kids, and like aim at this or whatever, like any kind of. But there really wasn't a lot I mean, of. It. That's why scary stories to tell at the dark is the thing that lasted. Yeah. Because um, it was genuinely scary. Here are these folk stories. Like he, you know that about that book? Like that guy didn't create any of those no, stories. No, 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 no. He he's traveled just, the country. I, mean, I think he's clear he about it. researched it, yeah. But he went all over and heard their local folk stories. And then he was the one to tell them in, in that book. Yeah. Um, Man, what a great scam. Yeah. Like Sniglets. They uh, have the people send in yeah. this stuff. And, um, and then get a, a, a mediocre movie made of your stories 30 oh, years later. I was later. like, oh my God, there was a Sniglets movie. No. <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, I, I kind of could. It's not good in my imagination. Um, but anyway, like hearing the um, hearing what a kid thought play by play that of is, the uh, Phantom Hitchhiker story that starts the whole thing. That's a that's a that's and a good one. That's I a great it, way to start it. Thank you. It was the first one that I wrote in all of the like ideation of it. Like that, I wrote twenty years ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a version of of the story that you know if you know the Phantom Hitchhiker story. Uh, but it occurs to me, and this kid is the is the first one to prove me right that I'm going to be a weird Al Yankovic where people are familiar first with this version, and then and, they will hear, and then the like, actual a kid will hear the like a real version of that story and be like, "That's not how it ends. That's not what what really happened." I love it. That's pretty great. No, uh, the weird Al is hearing the parody first. That's clear, I think. Yeah, yeah, I but understand I just that, to yeah. make sure. He did a serious song with mm-hmm. my friends. Nice. With uh, Portugal the Man, they cool. did. He did like a a, a song that is a not song? a parody song. Yeah, they did it last year or twenty twenty. Feel like I heard it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty great. It's called "Who's Gonna Stop Me," and oh. it's it's really fun because cool. you're like listening to it and you're like, "Is that Weird Al? Like, what's yeah. he doing on that?" Yeah, like it was pretty rad. Zach Sherwin. It was funny in like twenty fourteen. Me and Adam Todd Brown were doing a little tour. I think it was 2014, maybe 2015. We're doing a little tour and we were in St. Louis. And it was right after like some awful cop situation happened. I I forget which specific person. And I apologize for not remembering that off the top of my head. But like we were doing a show. It was like a rainy St. Louis. We picked like the worst possible time to be in St. Louis. And we realized that like, you know, the people that had bought tickets is like weren't going to come because it was like dark it was like torrentially rainy it was awful just a really terrible thing and zach was the show before us Mm -hmm. and it was this like really popular like coffee and beer shop like it was a coffee shop that was also a a, a, like a a beer spot and it was like this very popular spot in st louis and he had his fans were there and it was also not a particularly huge crowd because people just weren't coming out and we were like fuck we're just we're losing so much money doing this show we like we we were just like hemorrhaging money, and Zach was like, "I'm gonna be out of here." Blah blah blah. He's like, "Normally I'd sell merch, but I didn't bring any." And uh, don't buy anything; just donate to good causes. 
and like donate to these people don't spend money on there like mm-hmm. i'm fine and this is when he was writing on the the epic rap battles and mm-hmm. stuff like that so he had like a good job and everything mm-hmm. like that and we were sitting there and we were like don't say that please don't say that cuz like some people were staying for our show mm-hmm. And I was like, don't, don't, no, you can buy merch. Mm -hmm. Like you could totally buy, we actually, matter of fact, would really appreciate that Mm -hmm. because we're about to do an hour (laughs) of comedy to 12 people. To lose hundreds of To lose just a massive amount of money. We lost so much money on that. Um, There was like maybe three actual fans showed up Mm -hmm. out of like the, 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 the pre-sales that we'd had. And we're just like, we lost so much money. Um, it was so good. So how long did this take you? I mean, obviously you said you had written parts of it. Did yeah. you write this in piecemeal and then start to tie it all together I had, over I years? Had, I submitted to the editor um, a handful of stories, two, like maybe four in in the style, and two of them I think made it in, like felt right, like as it continued uh, to be stories in the book. And, and so as I was like putting it together... I think, I think that first month or so, I wrote 12, 15, I had 12, 15 stories, turned it in, and that was when we decided we could release it now as opposed to a year from now. Really? Um, yeah, he was like, if you aim for 10 months from now, then we can get out by like Halloween 2023. And I was like, well, let me try and aim for one year earlier than that. And we'll see, like if, if we have the default, like, if I can't do it, then we'll know we'll aim for 2023. But I turned in a batch of stories that was not enough, but it was close enough to enough. And in his view, it didn't take much editing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So he's like, we're in good shape. So let's do the 2022. I can easily see this at like a scholastic book fair. Right. It's the cover of it is like, this is such a book fair fair cover. Yeah. Yeah. And like the fact that it's scary, but not too scary. Like perfect. It's a sweet spot. Perfect. That stuff this that is... I love. And I mean, that's where it came from is like the idea that like he, he, he does kids books, this editor. Um, so he was With Simon about, and Schuster, right? Yes. Yeah. And he was, he was excited about like the kids book of it. Like the original draft of the hitchhiker story had a, a Garmin joke in it. And his thing was, can you take out like to make it a kids yeah, book? Could, take out the jokes that you need to be a grown up yeah. to know. Can you live with that? And I was like, yeah, no. If I can aim it at an audience, like if I can get it to kids and have this be like a thing that is big and scary and funny in their mind, like it, I don't know. It felt like a, a noble thing to do to to do the kind of book that thrilled me to get at a yeah. library or at a book fair. And I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you, that's a good financial decision. Sure. Like, I know that that's a thing where you're like, eh, but I don't really care about that. But let's be realistic here. You no. should care a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, no, I definitely should care more. <laughs> I mean, part of the, the um, math of do you, can you lose the Garmin joke is, yeah, I've been able to tell every joke I've wanted to tell in the Thrilling Adventure Hour for you yeah. know, however long we did that show. You know, the, the idea of adding a discipline to this where you, f- you meet the audience yeah. where they live is great. Nothing precious. Yeah. And that's perfect. Yeah. Um, how, okay, so so it uh, took it took me like a, a, a straight week of just working on stories to get that first batch of stories, and like that was really kind of you, yeah, no, I because like I that's... agree, but it's also like for so long in um, in quarantine to not have a deadline after having a deadline of like write seventy five eighty pages a month for ten years, yeah. like that's that muscle going, yeah, you, I need that deadline. You knock this give thing me this deadline. And also like the, if you look, I think there's probably 25 stories total. Yeah. So it wasn't like it's done every time I was like, should I add more? Cause I have these other ideas that I haven't turned into stories yet. And every time I was like, yeah, we need to hit, I think 50,000, 60,000 words or something. These, these book people look at things in words in a way that I can't. And, and uh, they probably know the science of it pretty mm-hmm. well. And yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that the, this, this, this is going to your hand is 180 pages. And yeah. I think that the thing is 192 pages. So I don't know. This is what the things where, this, where those pages this are, is going are. to do well. Thank you. Uh, from, from everything I've read from, from where it's targeted, even down to like the, the print size of it mm-hmm. and everything. I'm like, I oh, know exactly we had who a, we had a conversation about font. Of course. Like really fun to like, cause I am, a, you know, if I'm going to err on the side of, I'm going to err on the side of perfectionism, right? Like, yes. So the initial like layout was handed to me and I was like, I, th- 
unless the, I, I called the editor and I said, like, I think what is important to me is that, that t- it's a 10 and up book, right? Yeah. What's important to me is that 10 year olds dig it. What's important to me is and up also feels welcome. Like, yes. I think that if you are a, f- a fan of thrilling adventure hour, you're going to love this book. Like yeah. it's, it's that, I mean, it's that I'm right? not 10, right? I'm four of those. That's right. And I, I enjoy that. Sherwin, uh, remarkably not 10. Yes. Um, you would remark upon it, how not 10 he is. Yes. Um, but like there is a font in the beginning of one of the iterations along the way that felt to me that it was very 10 year old mm-hmm. and that if you are and up, you're going to be like, oh, pull, this isn't for me, from it, yeah. right? And and if that's a decision, if that's important, if that's like, this is how we reach the target audience. Was it Joker Man font? I I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't tell you, but I know that there were serifs. Is that how you pronounce uh, that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't I know nothing about words. The kerning was particularly <laughs> a, a reference, uh, uh, but uh, to call like this is the thing, to call the editor and, and voice a concern about a font is it's so different from like writing comics where like done is good. Yeah. Right. Um, to have a guy be like, Oh yeah, we'll give you, Oh, don't worry about that. We'll give you choice. Like none of this, this is, yeah, this is why we have you looking at this is to be, and it's awesome. every, everybody involved in this thing that I have met from like the editor to the designer to the, like all of the people so good at their jobs and so care and so yeah. invested and like just, and they know more than me about a thing and they're bringing that to the thing. It's the, just great. It's the collaboration of it. I'm very mm-hmm. excited for it. Do we? So we don't officially know when this is going. No, we know everything. It we comes do. out August 30th. Okay. Oh, it, wow. Yeah. Because that's the end of Campfire season and start of Spooky season. Like Perfect. that's when the Halloween yeah. books come out is August 30th. I love it. Um, but it is available now. You can find it by Googling the name. For uh, pre-sale. Uh, pre-sale? I'm yeah, guessing. it's oh, pre-sale. Stories to Keep You Alive Despite Vampires by Ben Acker. And if you follow me on Twitter at B-N-A-C-K-E-R. I was um, going to do that, but that's that. fine. Follow, saying, follow Ben at Ben Acker, B-N-A-C-K-E-R. I'm saying like, there's links right to it, so you yeah. don't have to remember the thing because it's a wordy title, and the older I get, the harder wordy titles are sticking. Yes. But uh, it is, it is. I implore you to pre-order because apparently it matters. That's very important. It's a thing. Um, and I'll I'll, I'll I'll do something too where I'll, I think I'll 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 get myself a, a copy of that as well in the real world and I appreciate and, it. Um, and maybe we'll we'll give it away or something oh, on the cool. on the Patreon as well. Yeah, it's um, cool. I have like a, f- a friend who's like, I'm gonna buy some for my kid's school. Yeah, which is like Jesus, like that's humbling that, and that's awesome. It's huge. Like, yeah, buy them for schools. Buy them. I I just heard you're allowed to buy them for nieces and nephews. Oh Which yeah, is like, that's that's cool. and especially to get these kids off of their <laughs> damn phones. <laughs> oh, you could buy them; they could read them on their phones. No, no, get them off their <laughs> damn phones. This would be a great audio book too, the way it reads. Yeah, I uh, wonder about that because that I feel like is something I could <laughs> I could make some phone calls and have happen in a podcast <laughs> in a minute. But also, like they probably have an opinion about it at Simon yeah. and Schuster, who I think got back together to make this book. Oh, it's good for them. Good I, for Simon. I, and I think I broke really a piece together. between Simon and, and Schuster. And Schuster. Yeah. It's funny too, because of how many people we know that are voice actors that would be like, I would love to do this book. Right. Like, this would be a great job. I would love to do that. Um, so definitely check this out. Um, definitely pre-order stories to keep you alive. Despite vampires by Ben Acker. Follow Ben at on uh, Twitter at B N A C K E R. Um, left that first E off for savings. Ben Acker. Yeah. Uh, and then follow Ben Blacker at Ben Blacker. No, he's got all the E's. Oh, he took them all. The extra <laughs> letters and all that. Um, for those of you that are patrons, stick around because uh, Ben and I are going to do a little bit of bonus content where Ooh. we're going to talk about Star Wars. Uh, all I Star know, Wars. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about it, but it's kind of a big deal. Um, ben, do you have anything uh, anything else to plug? Uh, to, definitely go back if you guys want to listen to Thrilling Adventure Hour. There's definitely go back. A bit of a, uh, there's a bit of a history there, so you can listen to... Uh, a lot of stuff. You can check out uh, Ben's uh, Thunderbolts run. I'm sure you yeah. can order Thunderbolts, Deadpool v Gambit. The uh, V is for versus. The V is for Vargan. That's right. No, that's check not. out the Vargan Vins. The Var- the, check out the Vargan Vins. Deadpool and Gambit. That's a good. Anytime they put Deadpool on a book, you're like, I guess I'm going to make some money off of this, huh? Oh, I don't think when we did it. They- no, they were like, <laughs> no. Nah. It was just just before he he really like blew up again. Before he or, broke again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anything? Any other things? Um. No. You could also check out the book uh, from a certain point of view. 
uh, which is a Star Wars book that uh, I'm nodding. Well, uh, home audience, you I'm are nodding. you are you are nodding, and that's something that we're going to talk about uh, right. when we get back. Um, for those of you that uh, like this, and uh, if you're listening to this for free, hey, thank you. I bet you sure would like to hear all the curse words and all the extra mm. bonus content. Effin, effin and Jeffin, and you can get that at Patreon.com/slash Jeff May uh, for pretty cheap. It's a pretty affordable. Uh, it's a pretty affordable setup, and then uh, you give me money, and I can keep doing this, and everybody wins. Yeah, and I I'll do. just be cool over here, hoping yeah. that the book works out. Look, man, this book, you're going to make more money off this book than I make in doing an episode the podcast. Of show? In one episode? Bare Jeez minimum. Louise, you promise? I sure do. All right. I sure do. That's great. Um, but you can check that out. You can also check out uh, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman on the Gamefully Unemployed Network. Uh, you can also check out Unpopular Opinion and You Don't Even Like Sports on the Unpops Networks. I and, dare you. And you can follow me at Hey There Jeff Rowe on Twitter Webinger. and Instagram. It's a good follow. Um, I still have. I think I'm pretty. Am I supposed to be talking? Uh, yes, yes. Right. I think I'm pretty funny. Yeah. I think I'm pretty good it's at Twitter. Funny enough. Like, at Twitter? It's, certainly. I'm Come certainly on. good at Twitter. Yeah. I'm not be funny in the real world, but on Twitter. Who I'm, knows? Twitter what does that I'm even great. mean anymore? I don't even. Nobody even knows. It's, until Elon shuts us down, that's not what's going to happen. Um, but again, uh, Ben, thank you so much Thanks for joining me. me. And uh, for those of you that are patrons, we'll see you in a split second. And, uh, and, and for those of you that aren't, we'll see you in a couple weeks. So bye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Rest in peace, go with Godfrey. Oh, no, that's not the thing. <laughs> bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Our artwork is created by Justin T. Brown, who can be found at Artness by Justin Brown on Instagram, as well as artnessbyjustinbrown.com. That dope music you heard is by Troy Nababon, available at Troy Nababon on Instagram, as well as at TroyNababon.com. Nababon is spelled N-A-B-A-B-O-N.